Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today we are in Lewisburg and not only are we in Lewisburg, but we are at the Silver Moon Consignment Barn. Yes, I was reading it behind me. I had to. What do you expect from me? I mean... Guys, I'm super excited because we are, of course, in the month of October and you know what that means. Halloween. We're going to get in here. I haven't been in here in, in this area in a while, so I'm super excited. We've got quite a few places to hit up today. Um, I'm excited to see if the vendors have gotten any Halloween in. So here's hoping. Let's get inside. Alrighty, guys. We are hitting it off strong with the Halloween. Truth be told, this is all the Halloween that I found. Spoiler alert. <laughs> So we do have the Bystel Witch there. She is an original. I did really like this pumpkin. Uh, it turns out that it was a party hat, which I thought was really interesting. I had never found one of those before. Now, I did end up getting the Bystel Witch. Here, I'm checking out the honeycomb. Uh, they're like obviously the orange and the black. It wasn't bad. It was $10 for the set of three. And what really caught my eye were these little owls here, the needle books. They were $3 each. I did pick up both of those. And then next to it was this beautiful bronze. Look at the spiders and the lizards. I mean, how perfect for Halloween was that? And of course, that amethyst glass back there. So we got the owls and we got the Bystel Witch. Up next, we do see this beautiful Vaseline glass. We have got Fostoria. We've got a lot of Fenton in here. I really love the Vaseline. More specifically, I love the opalescent Vaseline. Um, just some absolutely beautiful pieces. Now, I did have my flashlight, but truth be told, the worker was standing right next to me, and I felt very awkward filming <laughs> as it was. Now, I did see this Fenton basket here. Typically, I'm not too attracted to the baskets, um, but that Lily of the Valley pattern, I really do love. I think Fenton did a beautiful job of really localizing the opalescence, especially in the little flowers. Next door to the Vaseline was some Christmas. And of course, you know that we're always going to stop at the Christmas here at the Cult of Vintage. I'm always looking for the little bits and bobs that I can add to wreaths or assemblages. I just really wasn't seeing anything that was really unique enough for me to really want to get. Now, over here on the left-hand side, I did see these little ceramic angels, and I'm pointing to them there. Didn't really do the best of job picking them up, but they were there. And of course, next to the Christmas was Masters of the Universe, um, specifically He-Man. Truth be told, and I don't know if a lot of you know this, but I have a pretty extensive Masters of the Universe collection, and I do love the vintage figures. Obviously, these are the ones that I would have played with as a child, and I don't have the sorceress, the bird lady back there. I was kind of thinking about it, but I wanted her to be in better condition. So I am going to show you guys some of the vendor booths here. You know, this is very common, um, especially in Pennsylvania, the primitive or rustic look. A lot of the homes are very colonial. Um, exterior. And again, a lot of the homes are going to be very rustic on the interior. So this, the, this aesthetic really does lend itself well to a lot of the homes in central Pennsylvania. However, look at this, you guys, this new inbox, it obviously is a cone or yeah, hello, a cone topper. It's a Christmas tree topper um, from Ben's made in Japan. She is still in her box. And what was really standing out to me is obviously she has that paper mache face. You normally find them with like the rubber faces, the vinyl faces. So she was really special to me. I loved how fancy she was. And you guys, that's right. She was only $5. We got her. Of course we did. Up next, we were seeing a lot of glass. That's right. This vendor loved them, as you see, some Princess House. Um, it was all on sale. The Princess House was all 50% per percent off, correct? Okay. I saw the 20% and I was like, wait, everything else was 20% off. And you will see, um, and I do capture quite a few of the signs, it is 20% or 15% off. And this is one where it is, um, if you do cash or check, that you will get that additional discount. 
Here we have some wedge wood. I'm not too big on the wedge wood. I think it is absolutely beautiful, the Jasper Ware. Um, now, I do like a lot of the Vodder Schaefer, the very early Jasper Ware. They tend to be a little bit more crude. They're not as refined. Um, and I kind of like that crudeness, kind of like a flow blue, if you will, where the, especially in the United States, the flow of the ink is, is prized. And up top, that's right, you see it there, we do see some beautiful Royal Hager. It is this beautiful sculpt. I don't know the actual technical name, but they very much remind me of like a calla lily or a trumpet flower. And it was priced at only $20. And I was like, oh, it's it's she's large. She's in charge. Do I feel like shipping it? And I was like, oh, it's $20. Gorgeous glaze. Let me think about it. So we continued on through the vendor mall. And of course, something that caught my eye were these very tacky knee hugger elves and most specifically was this one here with the green hair that one really caught my eye it was priced at 25 dollars, which is very much the going rate for a lot of the knee huggers um and certainly much more for a lot of like kamar definitely command more of a higher value now this is the same vendor that had the knee huggers. You see a lot of longer burger there in the back um, and a lot of beautiful glass pieces. I've actually picked up a number of glass pieces from this particular vendor. Um, so I always like to go back through and make sure that nothing new was added. Unfortunately, I really wasn't seeing a whole lot of new things or more specifically, I don't think that I was seeing anything that was catching my eye. So if it was new, I think in fact that Fenton um, top hat there was new, um, that it just wasn't saying, take me home. Like I'm not excited by that sculpt, right? So we've got some hand painted Fenton here. These little critters, they are cute. I've never seen the little clown before. So obviously this vendor really did love them. Some Fenton, some milk glass here. Do you see the little gobel, the champagne or the wine glasses there, the figural champagne? They're not champagne, Michael. Stop saying that. It's the wine glasses. So we got some punch bowls. This little Westmoreland there, the covered dish. And then we see something. I feel like something is peeking at me. No. No, no, not peeking, but kind of glaring at me. And it turns out it's this carnival glass duck. Like, what is going on? That big blue eye? Mm -hmm. He was into something. And right across the way, kind of tucked back, was this great little planter. He's a little horse. I, You know what? He's adorable. Obviously, I was having a good time with him there. It was only $10. I thought he was adorable. I said, let me go ahead and get it. And with that, I did decide to go ahead and get a cart. Look, the little horse, he looks like he's in jail there. He's not in jail. He's in a cart. We're freeing you, horse. Look at that. Look at the beauty. All of these vendors love it. Now, the paper goods that we got, the Bicycle Witch and the, the Owl Needle Books, those were kept up front, obviously, because a lot of places they do keep things that are in cases at the front waiting for you. Now, we did see this great little figurine, very kind of like a Dutch boy-esque, but done in the Lefton Holly Berry um, pattern. So I do think he was Lefton. I love how they said old green figure. Yes, description. Um, on the back, he had a lot of paint loss, and I was kind of wondering, I was like, do I think I would like you better without any paint at all? However, uh, I think he would look really cute with some synthetic florals, but I did decide to go ahead and leave him there. You know, again, it's just, I know a lot of, there are some people that love the holly and berry, especially for the Christmas season. I know it's very nostalgic to me, uh, very reminiscent of my grandmother having Hershey kisses on them and having like the tiered tidbit tray. That was a big thing. So again, we are seeing another sale sign, 20% off over $20, but it's cash or check only. That's right. Get close. <laughs> this vendor has had a number of head vases. This one, um, the girl here in the back, she very much looked like she was almost like a Miss Dainty um, kind of sculpt, very Lefton-esque, if you will. 
Obviously, the others are very much a Napco. The one in the back with the large bouffant, I swear to you, I've picked this one up before. And she does have a pretty substantial chip there on the front. Um, however, the rest of her seem to be in good condition. And one thing that you always want to do with the head vases is tilt them down. Because looking at it from the front, you can't tell. But obviously, she had a big chunk from her eyelashes missing. Those falsies fell off. Girl, she was having a rough night and honey, it shows. Let me tell you what. Um... <laughs> Up next, we do have another vendor with, guess what, 20% off everything, cash or check only. I am reading the signs. I am making sure to read the signs. It's important. Words. They're important. Now, I didn't see a whole lot, but I did see, oh, yes, I did. I did see some parsimon glass over here. And, of course, parsimon is specific to Viking. Most other companies do call it Amberina. Um, but again, $25 for this set, really not that bad and really a great deal, especially for a collector. This would have been part of a console um, set. Obviously, the bull is missing. However, again, for $25 for the candlesticks, great deal. Not where I would have wanted it to be, um, but c'est la vie, right? Keep it moving. Obviously, this vendor has a lot of large stuff. And then, boom, oh yeah. Talking about finding things for our wreaths because, you know what, it's time to start cracking on making those wreaths. I did find this entire box of mercury glass um, balls. It was $6. So heck yeah, I picked them up because getting the older, smaller, and the medium-sized ornaments, it's been very difficult for me. So I definitely snatched these up. I love using these for little pops of color to kind of fill in smaller spaces very excited to get those. So in the cart they went, I was probably the most excited about those thus far. Now we did hand over into kind of, I guess you would call this the main area. It's kind of hard to get you a perspective. So I am showing you the roof so you can kind of see the size of it. Now, given that it's so large, um, I kind of wanted to do more of a highlight because I have, in fact, been here before. Um, so I didn't really want to bore you guys with doing another tour of the same location. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of highlight things that I thought were interesting, great collections, like all of this beautiful glass. Again, hey, look at this bell. I'm not really that much into bells. Um, however, like in this cameo style glass, I don't know if this was Fenton or not. It is beautiful. I love, you You know, and again, it's amber glass, but I'm telling you, you, you add opalescent to it. And I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> so we are definitely sculpting out all of the glass here. I'm not really seeing a whole lot new. It was I was kind of a little disappointed. Things seem to be very picked over. I was really hoping for a lot more of the Halloween, but alas, such is life. Now, I did see this swung vase back here. I do believe that this, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to look at the bottom here again with you guys. And um, I don't know. It could be Fenton, but that bottom is re really reading more Jefferson glass to me. Uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Is it Fenton? Is it Jefferson Glass? Is it neither? And I'm totally wrong. I think it was a good price, but I just didn't know that it would be that desirable. This one is pretty. I wanted to see what the color was on the bottom. Oh, it is brown. Or smoke. Or chocolate. Depending on who you ask. So this vendor does have a lot of things to look at. So I did take my time. You know, it is worth it. I, I did know that I had a lot of videos to try to shoot in one day. So I didn't have the luxury of going back like a second time that I usually like doing. So I really was trying to concentrate on this first go around because I knew we had to go on to 203. No, we went to three other places after this, you guys. Now, the thing that does catch my eye is the Mosser glass. This is the cherry cable pattern. I, again, am, I'm a huge sucker for opalescent glass. Um, now, it does not glow. A lot of the Mosser glass does not, in fact, glow. 
Here we are towards the end of the first aisle and nothing in here really catches my eye except for this piggy bank. Now he does have a pretty large chip there on his shoe. However, I do have this bank. I don't have this colorway. Interestingly enough, it says August 5th, 1950 West End Fire Company. So it does seem that, you know, it was won as a prize at the Fire Company Fair. Um, at $40, uh, I wasn't really feeling it. Um... You know, it very much is, you know, when you look at it, you know, when it was made, I don't know, it, it kind of was a sign of the time, you know, very derogatory in so far as being a quote unquote redskin. Um, but I do have a more ethnically appropriate native bank. Now, I always do carry around my flashlight. Well, not always, but most times I am carrying around my flashlight and I like to shine them into the marbles to see if there's any with uranium. Now, we do see this uh, paper mache. He is like a souvenir. It is Mexico and it is signed Mexico. It is not an artist. Um, I believe the artist's name is uh, de Grazi, um, that are very desirable and very collectible. However, this beautiful bright toucan or parrot, pardon me, um, I couldn't leave him behind. And that tag is, yeah, not focusing. The vendor did have it listed as wooden. However, he is in fact paper mache. He is so bright and cute and adorable. And those colors are fantastic at $12. I most definitely, yeah, you see it says wooden. But, you know, you can pop him off of, of his little perch there and use him as a figurine. But I love him on the perch. And right underneath it is this little poppet or socket doll. It is made with like a nylon face. It does have obviously a cloth body. And I was like, oh, I've never seen one in this good of a condition. They're usually very deteriorated. And I've certainly never seen one with a wind up. And I'm like, oh, it's $5 and it's in its original box. And then I'm like, musical baby. And then I'm like, what is it doing? Moving? I'm like, what? It's a charming sleeping doll. And I'm like, but does it work? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to wind it up here. I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to give you the full creep effect with this little baby. Here we go. And you're totally welcome for that nightmare fuel for a few days, ladies and gentlemen, right here at the Cult of Vintage. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And of course, they have had this car. Please do not touch. I did not touch it, you guys. I did not touch it. It is in immaculate condition. So I don't, I, you know, 1929 truck, 18,000. I believe that it probably would have been restored. It, definitely it was restored with a lot of love and a lot of care. It is absolutely beautiful. I think it is visually striking. Um, I'm glad to see that somebody did have enough passion for it. I don't know if it works. It's a Ford. I was very interested to see what the gasket figure was so we're gonna get up close and it turns out it's a flying duck sure <laughs> i just absolutely love the lines that olive green color is so classic it's very john deere-esque don't you think look at the horn there can you just imagine that it's like a ruga little side plates i love the yellow hubcaps i really wanted to get in and um well, not physically in, but I really wanted to get the camera in there so you could see all the doodads and nods. But, And you guys, we're about to wrap it up here. And I did go back, in fact, for that Hager piece. And then I noticed it said as is. And I was like, what's wrong with you? And I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. And then the horror of it all. That is one heck of a break. Yeah, all the way through. Not the best repair job. Well, guys, that is it. And I'm going to catch you outside. See you in a bit. Well, there you have it. Right there, Silver Moon, Consignment, Barn, and Antiques. Hey, 
I think we did pretty darn good. I definitely was looking for Halloween. We found a couple of pieces. The vintage bicycle, really nice. The owl needle books. I think those are going to be super cute. What I'm going to try to do is find some of the flower frogs, the metal ones, and then get two of the smaller ones and put those together so that you'll have something to display the needle book with. I think that'll be really cute for Halloween or year round if you like it creepy. Who am I? Well, guys, I do hope that you had, well, I hope that you had a good time today. You got a few laughs. We definitely try to keep it interesting here at the Cult of Vintage, just saying. And as always, guys, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.